Hey there and welcome in. I hope you liked my video yesterday about self-hosting Nextcloud. Um, in the following weeks I'm going to um, add some more new videos about firewalls and about packet filter and stuff like that. Um, you know, the content that I'm making is usually uh, following a little bit of what I'm doing right now, or a, a little bit about what I'm learning about. Um, and obviously I like to share everything that I learn. Uh, I like to share everything I find interesting, right? So this is the, uh, the entire channel that I'm doing, right? It's uh, pretty much everything that I like to do, that I enjoy doing, right? So first of all, you know, th this is not my work. This is my hobby. And as such, I prefer it to stay, um, you know, as, as fun, as fun part of my life. Uh, so right out of the gate, uh, this video is not sponsored. And basically none of my videos are sponsored. However, uh, I did recently um, get an opportunity to work with uh, one of uh, the companies that stand behind open source. Uh, a company that believes uh, in open source and uh, in free software. And I was kind of lucky to um, somewhat stumble upon them because they as well uh, tend to like my content, right? Um, so once again, this video is absolutely not sponsored. They have absolutely no say in any of my videos. Uh, however, they are one of my Patreons, just like you guys are. Um, so the, the reason behind my introduction, right, is that I was in search for a network card, uh, behind my, um, uh, I have, um, I have a tiny PC, right? I think I showed it on one of my videos. Uh, actually, I think it was Zorin, uh, 17.2, uh, video, the one in which I wasn't talking, uh, when I was sick and stuff like that. Um, and this tiny PC, I... Uh, actually bought in order for it to be my uh, network router. I was going to install BSD on it uh, and use the uh, BSD packet filter uh, for my firewall, uh, but I just couldn't find the matching um, network card for it, right? In order to have a firewall, you have to have at least two um, gigabit ports, right? And um, these guys were kind enough to well, give me a network card, right? It's just that it's not a network card. It's actually a full-blown router, right? So let me show you what I got just to see what we are working with. Uh, let me switch to game stream here, right? So this is OpenSense uh, branded DET 700 series firewall, right? Um, 10 gigs of throughput on these slots here. Right, so these two guys are uh, SFP ports, right? And uh, you can fill them up with whatever you like. Uh, you can put optical receivers in there. You can put uh, another copper. Uh, you can choose the speed up to 10 gigs, right? So I have also a couple of these. Uh, so basically what you need to do is just, uh, what is the size, right? Uh, you just plug them in like this. Uh, the copper one stick out a little bit. Uh, the optical one uh, stick uh, much less uh, out, right? Uh, and these guys provide me with a 10 gigs connection, right? So I have two of these. Um, the rest of the ports are two and a half uh, gigabits, right? And also we have a USB port here in case you want to um, reinstall the operating system. Uh, and you have the USB cable, which basically acts, acts um, instead of your monitor, because this device doesn't have a VGA, HDMI, display port, or anything uh, like that, right? So it claims to have 1.2 gigabits per second IPsec VPN, 256 of storage, 8 gigs of RAM, and it's fanless, right? It's Ryzen powered. This is Ryzen embedded, so not actually a desktop. Uh, CPU. I read somewhere that it's like 15 watts or something like that, so it shouldn't um, spend too much of my home energy. Uh, 10 gigs of throughput without VPN, right? Uh, what, el what else is there? But basically, it's x86, so in theory, I can install Arch Linux on it. Uh, I, I mean, I can. Uh, nothing really stopping me from doing that, right? 
uh, RAM appears to be upgradable. I didn't open it uh, because the the way this picture is designed makes me think that the uh, heat sink is being um, a part of the upper shell, right? So if I remove it, then I'm going to have to apply the uh, the thermal paste again, and I just don't want to do that just yet, uh, unless I have a reason to open it. Maybe someday if I really need more than 8 gigs of RAM. Okay, so the first thing you might want to do with your new OpenSense firewall is to have a dynamic DNS, because if you are a regular resident at home and you want to host any kind of service, you will want to have a static IP address. And if you don't have one, then a dynamic DNS service is going to save you. Uh, the way this works is basically whenever your IP, uh, your public IP changes, your uh, firewall, your dynamic DNS service hosted locally is going to um, update your, um, well, fully qualified domain name uh, somewhere on the internet on your preferred dynamic DNS uh, service of, of your choice, right? And this fully qualified domain name will always uh, be pointing to your current IP address, right? So whichever service you publish on the internet, you can just do the CNAME entry on the DNS, um, on your DNS server, right? To to your dynamic DNS um, hostname, right? So for example, if you have a website like my own, like www.fossheadquarters.org, uh, usually you want to point this as an A record to your IP address, right? But I don't have an IP address. I mean, I have it, but it's dynamic. Uh, but instead I use this www.fossheadquarters.org as a C name record, which is basically a DNS alias for another fully qualified domain name. Uh, so I just point this fully qualified domain name to my other uh, fully qualified domain name, which is actually my dynamic uh, DNS name. So the way you can do this is basically pick your own um, dynamic DNS service, right? I'm using Cloudflare. As you can already see on the screen, basically just log in to your account, uh, go to your profile, and then on the left side, go to API tokens, uh, go to create tokens, uh, use the template for edit zone DNS, just use that one. Uh, permissions, zone, DNS, and edit. This must be enabled for, for this token to work, right? Uh, zone resources, um, include a specific, you can use uh, include all zones if you have multiple domains, so you can edit any of them, right? Uh, but if you plan on it to only to edit just one fully qualified domain name, then you might as well decrease the attack vector, the potential attack vector on your account if, you know, your token leaks anywhere for any reason, right? Uh, so you can go ahead and use the specific zone and then just pick the, uh, pick the zone that you want to edit here. Uh, client IP address filtering. Uh, you probably don't need this time to leave. You can you don't need to touch that. Yeah, the name token name here, uh, for example, Dean DNS. Okay, there we go. Dean DNS. Continue to summary, right? So this is your this is your result. Create your token, right? And you're going to get uh, a token here. So don't worry about this uh, showing on the screen. I'm going to delete this token uh, as soon as I finish making this video. So don't even bother with copying this one. But uh, you do want to copy your own because this is the only time that it is going to be presented to you, right? So you can go ahead and copy it to a safe place, maybe to your password manager or to some kind of uh, encrypted vault or wherever you keep your um, you know, secret passwords and stuff like that. So just go ahead and copy this one, right? And when you're done copying, you can go ahead and go back to your tokens, right? Tokens. And here you can see that uh, these tokens are now being listed, right? 
So the next thing you need to do, go to your dashboard of your own OpenSense firewall, right? Go to firmware packages, type DNS here, and you want to install a DD client, right? Just go ahead, install that package. And then go ahead and go to services, dynamic DNS, settings, general settings. Here uh, it will be disabled by default. You want to enable it, of course. Interval, uh, it is by default set to um, verify every five minutes. Uh, you can leave that as default if you like it. Uh, backend, make sure to keep it at native. Uh, I tried using DD client as an option, but it didn't work for me. So just keep it at native and then go back to accounts, right? So you want to add an account here, right? For a description, type anything you like. Uh, service, you're going to pick one of your uh, preferred uh, dynamic DNS service, right? But since we're using Cloudflare, you want to pick that service here username nice one florp nice one let's do that again description something cloudflare so for the username just don't type anything right for the password you want to paste your api key that you have used right zone uh, this is your domain that you are updating, right? So fosshq.org, uh, type your own domain name here, of course. And then here, uh, opensense.fosshq.org, right? And press enter so that this entry is the, what is going to be updated, right? Um, check IP method, press here and type interface choose ipv4 and then choose your um, external interface which is usually when right uh, so this will help you to um, get your new ip address updated faster uh, also for ssl this must be checked uh, and uh, well press save right and this should now work go to your log file if there is nothing in logs, then your new entry is probably now uh, fully functional. NS lookup, opensense.poshq.org, and voila, you can see that this now works. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this short introduction into a little bit of um, networking, right? We are going to do some networking with free and open source uh, software, specifically with FreeBSD and OpenSense and all kinds that all kinds of stuff that surrounds uh, this topic in the near future, right? Uh, I could put more of the topics in one video, but I want to chop them into pieces so that people who are asking for and searching for instructions on how to do a specific thing uh, will be able to just watch one short video instead of, you know, scrubbing through a really long video that contains all kinds of stuff. It, 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 this way, it, it proved to me that people generally don't like my one hour videos. So I'm going to make uh, a short ones in the future. Uh, and once again, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, if you have any comments, please comment. I love to answer all of them. I love to get comments. Uh, I love to discuss stuff. I like to discuss open source, so source stuff. I love to, uh, sorry, my uh, tongue is twisting again, but I love to discuss everything free and open source uh, software, right? I'm going to see you in the next video.
Thank you.